Hey guys, coming at you again with another Bible review. This is the New Living Translation Illustrated Study Bible. I picked this up. Um, I actually got it in the mail yesterday, but I was trying to figure out what type of Illustrated Study Bible I wanted because I do not own an Illustrated Study Bible. I do own the New King James Cultural Study Bible, which I encourage you, if you do not have that, you should definitely pick that up. That is a source of wealth, of spiritual wealth. You will gain so much knowledge from that because, as we got to remember, when we read the scriptures, we're, we're going into another culture. We're going into another time. We're going into another world. Therefore, if you don't have that, get that. But for this video, I want to talk about this Bible and, and share with you what's inside this Bible and just share with you um, some of the things about this Bible. I was debating whether or not to get this or the CSB um, Bakersfield Illustrated Study Bible. I believe that's what that's called. And I ended up going with this because there is more illustration in this Bible than there is in the CSB. For my um, research and watching videos on YouTube and uh, reading comments, <sighs> It just pointed me to this Bible. So I wanted to share this with you. The New Living Translation. Um, I really like this translation. It is a solid translation. Um, if I had any cons with this translation, I would say um, Ecclesiastes. When I read Ecclesiastes, there was one time I, I stumbled upon a verse that was completely, um, you could say, I just was not, I don't know if I was in agreement with that translation compared with other translations. However, no translation is perfect. I'm not about to say um, or exalt one translation over the other. But I don't want to get into that in this video. Let's get right to this. So this is the NLT Illustrated Study Bible, New Living Translation. I bought this in the brown tan edition deluxe. And um, to turn it over for you. This is the back of it, so if you want to pause that and check that out. And here is, well, no, normally the ISBN is right there. ISBN is right there. Printed in Italy. Um, and then it's a nice, solid box. I believe a clamshell is what we call this. It's nice and hard, and it's, it's, it's solid. It is solid. Um, so, I mean, if you want to take this thing to church... Um, you could just use the box. You really don't even need a, a leather cover. However, I will warn you, this Bible is like a cinder block. This thing's probably like five pounds. I'm not exaggerating. This thing is solid. Um, so, open this up. Well, before I do that, I want to show you this. Um, look at the, look at that. So this is what the type of material you will see within this Bible. This is beautiful, and I've I've already skimmed through this Bible, and to be honest, I don't know where to start. Uh, I bought many Bibles before. I bought many study Bibles, and um, I'll struggle to find a place in those. But specifically with this Bible, there's just so much material, and uh, so I'm currently still struggling to figure out where to start in this. So this is what the Bible looks like. It's beautiful. I, I really like that. It's got a nice uh, stitching on the front. Um, it's it's got a brown, kind of a burgundy, I would say, and then a light brown, and then the uh, side of the Bible looks like that. NLT Illustrated Study Bible New Living Translation. And of course, you got Tyndale, and there's nothing on the bottom of that. There is one con about this Bible. And for many of you who have uh, watched the Bible reviews, you probably already know that this is not Smith sewn. As you can see right there, it is it's glued. Um, that's the only downfall about this. So, like, I could just, I could, you could just stick your finger right there. Um, so, if there's any cons about that, that's that's my only con that I have so far. Um, you open it up, it's a paste down. Um, the stitching is really nice on it. I really like that. Um, I believe 
got a nice kind of grain feel to it. A little piece of cardboard. Um, of course, you got that. And then you got your presentation page, just like you do with every other Bible. Um, and this is what you'll see. Open my eyes to see the wonderful truths in your instructions. Psalm one nineteen eighteen. 18. This is the New Living Translation Illustrated Study Bible. So this is some of the illustration. The, the amount of color in, the, in this Bible is insane. There's so many pictures. There's so many uh, bright, colorful illustrations that, will, that you will see all throughout this Bible. So that's just kind of the, the first picture you stumble upon when you open this Bible. Um, so we continue to turn in the pages. Here are some different ISBNs and different um, covers that this Bible comes in. So if you'd like to look them up by IS, their ISBN and see how much those cost. Um, this one ran me about, say, $52, $55. Um, so this was actually a Christmas present. Uh, so thankfully I didn't have to pay anything out of pocket. But um, I'm thankful for this Christmas present, and I encourage you to get this Bible, and you'll see why as I continue to show you what's in this. So here's the contents, um, and you get to the introduction of the Illustrated Study Bible, and you got its contributors right there. So look at that. This is awesome. How to study the Bible with the Illustrated Study Bible. One thing that I really liked about this study Bible when I first opened this up is that it gives you basic study principles. And the very first thing this Bible tells you to do is to read the Bible text first. It says, no feature of the Illustrated Study Bible is more important. And the New Living Translation itself will help you to understand the message more fully because of its emphasis on making the message of the scripture clear. So it emphasizes the importance to not let the notes and the illustrations trump the actual scriptural text. I think sometimes, and I've personally done this before, I would tend to read the commentary of Bibles. I would tend to read the sources that were provided in the Bible more than I would actually read <clears throat> excuse me, more than I would actually read the Bible. And um, I'm sure I'm not the only guilty one of doing that, but this says read the text first. So look at this. Like, look, just the color in this is incredible. So you have maps, and this is just uh, some examples of what you'll find in the Bible. You will have, uh, you'll have timelines, you'll have maps, you'll have uh, little sections that talk about the fall, Melchizedek, you'll have lots of pictures, maps, and timelines, as I said. Um, so you just continue to go through that. It goes in how to study the Bible, and then a note to the readers. So let me skip to my next little uh, note tab right there. Well, here, stop right here. I didn't actually mean to do this, but Old Testament archaeology. So I know there's archaeology study Bibles, but in this Bible, you have archaeology um, sources you can go to. So the contribution of biblical archaeology. And then you have the Rosetta Stone. So, again guys, this Bible is full. Full of material. So, continue to go through the Bible. Uh, look at that. So, we have the pet the Pentateuch. Uh, just look at the colors of that. I mean, that's 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 gorgeous. That's beautiful. And as as uh, not one person has said before, these these aren't put in the Bible to uh, entertain you. They're put in the Bible to illustrate um, <laughs> illustrate the Bible and to help you. Kind of, I would say, and this is just my opinion, to read the Bible with these visual images in mind to help you um, be drawn toward the scriptures, to be drawn toward the Bible. Um, going over here, you have ancient Near Eastern texts and artifacts. So this was awesome. Uh, you have a list of stuff, artifacts, historical, that have been proven. And uh, 
you will see the title, for instance, and then the date, and then the description of what it is and where it can be found in the scriptures. So the colors of that, I, I absolutely love the colors of that. So, skipping over, I don't want this video to be super long. Um, this, for instance. The visual images in this Bible, again, is just awesome. Then you have a little source. Uh, this is on the page for Genesis 11. Talking about Babel, the dispersion of the nations. And then you, of course, have your commentary notes in three sections. Um, one thing about the Old Testament, uh, and I know this isn't consistent throughout this Bible, but in Genesis you have blue bold headline the, for the titles. It's blue and bold. Um, I would say the font, I'm not entirely sure what the font is on this. I would say it's probably like a, I don't know, an 8 or 9. I would say a 9. And then the commentary notes are like an 8 or a 7. Um, maybe I'm wrong on that. That's just a wild guess. But then you have the uh, scriptural references to the side. Uh, again, it's blue and black. Scriptural references to the side. And then you got your three column. Your three column um, sections for this Bible that contain the commentary. So this is really cool. I really like this. I really like this. So Israel's an annual calendar. So of course we go through January to December. This is how they do their calendars. This is how they did their calendars. And it goes in depth. And like I said guys, this, this Bible is full of color and full of imagery. It's a beautiful Bible. It's, it's, it's a beautiful Bible. So continuing to flip through this Bible. Um, again, it goes back to the imagery. And this is in the book of Judges. Um, so continue. So I really like this. So if you go to 1 Samuel um, chapter 18, verse 19, on page 300, 300, 541, excuse me, in this Bible, you will come to this. David on the run. So, of course, Saul is trying to kill David. Saul is jealous of David. and De David's on the run. So you have a map. <laughs> and you have, and for instance, you can read it. It says, David was successful in Saul's service, but Saul responded with murderous jealousy. So David was forced to flee from Saul's court to give you. I'll let you buy, I'll let you buy this and I get into this if you want to know more information about this. Um, but look at that, the wilderness, um, along the Dead Sea, and the region. Uh, it's just, this is, this is awesome. And, it, and like I said, uh, it's not consistent. The boldness of color, let me try to, I don't want this to have too much shadow on. Um, see, now the text is brown. The bold is brown. It was blue back in Genesis, if you remember. So, for instance, right there, Genesis blue. And you're first saying, you know, now it's brown. So, hopefully that don't bother you as much. I mean, it really don't matter to me. But some people like their colors consistent. Um, but I don't really care. So, skip, continue to skip through this. Here's kind of what the Psalms look like. So, not every picture has an image on it, um, which is good. You don't. I think you don't want to get overloaded and burnt out. With too many illustrations, sometimes you just want the text. Sometimes you just want to see the text. Um, and there's not, the, the bleed through in this Bible really isn't that bad. Um, so far, I haven't seen nothing that really causes me to worry um, too much. And I don't know about you, but when I open a Bible, I absolutely love the crisp sound. Let me see if I can get it going. Like that right there. Oh, boy. That's just a, I just love that sound. Anyway, you got a section on pride and humility in the Proverbs. And then you, again guys, we got pictures. This is an illustrated study Bible, so of course you should expect to see many illustrations. So the ribbon. Um, it's a good length, I think. It doesn't, some Bibles you'll see the ribbons cut really short. And uh, you kind it kind of gets lost when you close the Bible. That's not good. So this is... A nice um, dark brown ribbon. I like that. So again, we're not consistent with the colors. Now we got purple. 
for Ezekiel, the boldness. Um, and that's okay. I don't care. And then you got your references, of course. Back to the references. So look at that. So now we have an article about Nebuchadnezzar. In the book of Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar. And then you got all these imageries. I just love it. I absolutely love it. So, and then you got your references, of course. So, here's an introduction to the book of Joel. So, each book, I'm pretty sure, has a picture, like an introduction um, to the book with a picture. So, this is a picture that is provided in the book of Joel. And then you got the settings, and then this is in the section of the prophets of Israel. Um, so, you just go through there. You got your columns, three columns, commentary. I'm sorry this um, happened to move this camera so much. I need to get a stand. So um, I apologize for that. So let's skip to the New Testament. So beginning with the New Testament, if I can, again, these, these, these pages are crisp. So look at that. I think that's gorgeous. I just do. And the illustration on that is awesome. I love it. Um, so we're done with Malachi. And then you got the period in between the Old Testament and the New Testament. This is something that's very beneficial and in information. Uh, very beneficial information that all of us, I think, should have at our hands. Um, to know what happened in between those testaments. It wasn't just a quiet time. And I was told that a lot. Um, in the past that it was kind of quiet. No, there was a lot going on in between the Testaments, the Old Testament and the New Testament. So, again, you have a lot going on, a lot of imagery. And here is the beginning of the New Testament. That is beautiful, guys. I would love to fish right there. I would absolutely love to fish right there. So, you have the beginning of the New Testament. If you want to pause that and read that. And this is not a red letter text. Some people really like red letter text. I do. I really don't matter to me though. I've kind of, kind of stopped caring so much about that, just because all of God's word is important. Um, and some things that uh, Jesus said to the Christians in the Gospels does not apply to us. Um, so I don't want to be a full fledged red letter text Christian. Especially when something doesn't apply to me and only applied to Israel. So you got the chronology, chron, chronology of Jesus' life. Forgive me if I'm saying that wrong. And then you have a timeline. Um, pretty cool. They, these things are full of timelines. So genealogy of Jesus. So look at that. Awesome. And you'll find stuff like this in other study Bibles. But again, the color in this and the illustrations in this is awesome. Um... So you continue in Matthew, and again, it's not a red letter text. Um, let me get to the next part. So I really like this. The stone the builders rejected is Matthew 21. And then we'll get to the end of the Bible. So we have right here, let me focus in, table of ancient weights, measures, and coins. And you got word studies. So I was worried that this Bible didn't have this because word studies are extremely important. Um, if you want to understand the Bible, you need to understand what the words mean. And the New Testament was written in Greek, so you need to understand what the Greek words meant because they do not mean they don't always mean the same thing as English words mean. Um, so I just think that's really beneficial. And looky there, you have more <laughs> imagery illustrations. Um, it's just great, guys. I really enjoyed this Bible. I actually, I love this Bible. And I will be using it constantly. Um, and you got your maps. The kind of kind of glossy, kind of plain. I really liked it to plain though, because some some Bibles just have the the maps are way too glossy. And I don't know. I'm just kind of traditional type of guy. Um, I don't really like it to be too look too nice if that makes any sense um, but yeah guys this, if you don't have this pick it up oh look at that that's 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 awesome so yes if you don't have this I encourage you to pick it up again the only con 
I would give this Bible is that it is not Smith sewn. That is the only con because eventually I'm going to have to get this rebound probably. I'm hoping this lasts me for a long time, but I will use this all the time. I'm one guy that breaks, I'm a type of guy that breaks in his Bibles. So, uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Like this video. If you dislike it, dislike it. I'm cool with that. Whatever. Uh, tell me what you didn't like about this video. Again, if you didn't like the movement of the camera, I apologize for that. Um, I need to get a stand. So, I apologize for that. But I hope that you really enjoyed this uh, Bible review. I pray that you continue to grow in the Lord and that uh, maybe God will lead you or something will lead you to um, buying this Bible. This is great. Great job, Tyndale. I really like this Bible. Um, and I encourage you to check out uh, my other reviews that I've done. God bless you guys.